And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. Another week has flown by. And the end of the month. Mm, really? Oh, yes! This is our end of the month show. Because, um... Yeah, it's the very, very tail end. The coccyx bone of April 2016. And the next time we will see you, it will be uh, time for Mayflowers and Cinco de Mayo celebration May 2016 will be our next show welcome everyone um, you already know who we are and where where we're from because you saw the introduction and the introduction saves me the energy of telling you let's see well uh, not that I care but uh, the uh, evangelical uh, insane cultists, uh, Ted Cruz, has selected uh, the horse-faced or, or weasel-faced um, Carly Fiorina as his uh, VP running mate. Very confident that he's selecting a VP running mate. Very confident that he's... Not a confidence. It's insane. It's never happened before. That he's going to defeat Donald Trump. <laughs> You know, uh, He's uh, pretending. But they both have uh, um, Ted Cruz and uh, Carly Fiorina have one thing in common, uh, two things in common. No, number one, they're delusionally insane because Carly Fiorina's track record in business is horrible, and uh, she, she broke a lot of glass ceilings. She she uh, 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 she didn't save anything anything she 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 did not save you a packet at all but anyway uh they both have one thing in common besides being delusional and insane uh is that they both have the same pointy weasel like face with the pointy nose and and everything and someone on the uh, facebook group says well that that goes with their satanic uh cults that they're really representing i says well probably but they're they're two funny-looking, ugly motherfuckers. That know. reminds me. Mr. Boehner. Ah, Boehner's getting more... Uh, Mr. Um, Boehner um, uh, called Ted Cruz a Lucifer the other day. And said he was the Lucifer most... Lucifer in the flesh. And he said he was the most miserable son of a bitch he that ever worked... That was supposed to be an insult. John... But it was not an insult. Well, it was accurate. It would have been an insult if he would have called him Satan, not Lucifer. Because when Satan was Lucifer, he was great. Well, you know, he what was he, the morning star. But you, but you know what talented. Well, you know what his. Everything. You know what John Boehner's. What he meant. What his motive. I don't was. care. People better be accurate in their statements. Because the same thing they do with radical. It's the same thing. They use the word wrong. And then, and then what happens is people end up demonizing the word radical. And it shouldn't be demonized. They've already done it. They, cut, they, put, it, they put it on everybody who's a demon. They, they're radicals. They're radicalized. Any, anybody who wants to buck the system and change the system. Is a radical. And anybody who contests the status quo, whatever, is, is a radical. Yeah. Uh, when in reality... 
Yeah, radical is good. Now, if you are evil uh, and do bad things, you are an extremist. Extremism. But anyway, John Boehner also said that he, Ted Cruz, was the most miserable son of a bitch he ever worked with. Nobody likes him. Nobody likes him. He, and and uh, well, oh, they gave John Boehner the boot. They gave Boehner the boot. Yeah, because he's very disgruntled about that. And uh, well, why shouldn't he be? And he said that that uh, Democrats or liberals, whatever, whatever. I don't even want to say put Democrat in the same yeah. category. As a liberal anymore because it's That's not true, true. but true. the the uh, the liberals everything they suspected about Republicans is correct John Boehner uh, stated that that that, that you know it, it's all true what they say about Republicans mm -hmm. which we knew right along mm -hmm. I mean uh, they're they're very obvious they're very uh, they're arrogantly in your face you know what their agenda is and based on this um, interview of folks on the street, uh, in, an interview of feminists, mm -hmm. my other suspicion about Hillary supporters was is also true. The feminist said to the interviewer, <laughs> "Yes, we are more or less supporting Hillary because we want the first female in the White House." They they, they came clean. They admitted it. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, um, uh, it was um if they just want a woman they could vote for Jill Stein Jill Stein is is um, a female yeah. but she's the she's the opposite uh -huh. side of the coin from Hillary of Jill a corporatist Jill, yeah. Jill Stein is a is a true progressive yeah you Isn't know that funny how it works hey even Elizabeth Warren is uh she might not be she might or might not be as progressive as Jill Stein, but she's a hell of a lot nicer uh, 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 of, a, of, a, of a person and honest and also very, very intelligent because she taught law at, at Harvard. She's a much better selection than Hillary Clinton, without a doubt. And she's also female, you know. Mm -hmm. um, But there are other females that are like Hillary Clinton. Uh, obviously, uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, has, and the, you know, the, most of your Democrats are uh, blue dog corporatists. I wouldn't even say moderates anymore. No, they they've come clean and uh, and um, they uh, are, are voting very similar uh, to the way Republicans vote. You know, they just, they don't want to pass anything that would help the poor, um, any progressive program that is uh, trying to be passed. Uh, um, they're, for the, they're, for the most part, they're for the same cuts and uh, for the little guy and, the, and, and they're, and they're pro-corporate and anything that's good for big business, they're in it. You know, we're talking about the majority of these Democrats, I mean... Anyone who is obligated to the money coming in from the corporations and the billionaires and millionaires. Anyone is corrupt. They've taken, they, they, they're on, if they've taken, if they've taken uh, astronomical sums of money from... You don't even have to be astronomical. If they've taken, if they've taken big money from the rich, from the fat cats, That's from the right. top one percent, when they ran for a Congress person or senator, they owe them favors, so they can they can call themselves a Democrat. Lobbyists can go into their office any time with an envelope. Well, they with an envelope, but they, you can't get in there. They um, they meet with them. Alec, they can't blame. They can't like blame. The, um, the lobbyists because they meet with them and they they have to accept their money and uh, when they accept their money they're also accepting the fact that you owe them uh, so uh, I don't know what what's the point 
and these uh, vast numbers of Americans who are so dedicated to the Democratic Party and then you have the mainstream media asking Bernie Sanders uh, you know what is it what his intentions are yeah, why are you still in why are you still no, in? no 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 they're asking him what are you gonna do uh, what are your plans are for the Democratic Party are you going to donate are you going to put up some of your uh, some of the funds that you have raised and donated to the Democratic Party what what is your they were trying to test his loyalty to the Democratic Party and I could care less about the Democratic Party mm -hmm. who cares about the party the party can go belly up before mm -hmm. uh, uh, you and know. should you know I mean uh, if, if if I care I could I could care less about the two-party system mm -hmm. collectively and these these numbskulls still think it's the Democratic Party of uh, LBJ, FDR, FDR, FDR LBJ, yeah. LBJ, JFK, yeah. LBJ, right, right. I don't want people yeah. to get confused. But it's the Dixiecrats covered over. That's all it is. Okay. Well, they they are leftover Dixiecrats. Yes. That's it. They've never changed, really. And, and for those of you that are not familiar with the term, Google it. You know. But Google the, it. But the name, the main, the the, the main uh, theme of this show is that stop blaming the establishment politics. Stop blaming the career politicians of the two-party system, which is totally corrupt. Stop blaming these politicians. The fault lies in you, the electorate. You are to blame for all of your problems and the problems in the United States. The voter is to blame because when you walk into that voting booth, all the way to the right, you will see people running that are not part of uh, the Republican or Democratic Party. You, you will see independents, you will see Green Party candidate or Reform Party <clears throat> candidate. You have choices. Mm -hmm. You can write somebody in. You, nobody is there with a 12-gauge shotgun to your head in the booth saying, you got to pick only a Republican or a Democrat? Well, however, though, did you see that uh, picture last night on Facebook? Where only Hitler, uh, Clinton was mentioned in the column. There was no Bernie Sanders on the goddamn you know, ballot. You know what? I proudly posted that those articles. Um, some of our members of the Facebook group, Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth, chose not to share it they chose to put it on their own profile which is very selfish and I'm the one stupid that, because nobody goes to their profile nobody goes to their profile I'm the one that and you people know who you are I'm the one that posted it in the uh, political group which has it's close to 3,000 members I'm sure I'm sure these individuals don't don't even have anywhere near that in their profile. You know, they're friends list. But anyway, and it shows proof that these primaries have been rigged for Hillary Clinton. Mm. And as you, before the show began, this show, you saw the short video clip of uh, an example of voter fraud, of cheating, uh, it was a, a gentleman in Chicago that entered the voting <clears throat> booth and kept on pressing the button for Bernie Sanders. Yeah, and, that one too. And nothing lit up. Bernie yes, Sanders. A one lit up in Clinton's column. Well, maybe I need to pay more attention to that well, video. Well, you better look at it again. He's pressing to beat the band, right. like my mother would say. He's, keep, he's pressing the Bernie button. Right. And nothing's happening with the Bernie button. But a one appears in the Clinton button. That was Chicago. Okay. Now, the individual who was smart enough to take out his smartphone and, too, and, video yeah. re and video record his voting, which everyone should do now, you know, being that you have the technology to do so. Hmm. 
as you walk in, you point your, your, you activate your cell phone, you point it towards the panel of candidates, and you video the whole process, but, but he forgot to do one important thing. You little numbskull. He forgot to announce the location of the voting right. booth. Yeah. First, the curtain closes. Now you're alone with your thoughts. Phone comes out, boom. You announce the location of the voting booth. That's all you need to do is announce the location. I am hereby at a voting booth at uh, 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 high school, uh, um, Elmer Fudd Elementary High School in uh, Harbarken. In in uh, in um, Screwjob, Illinois, and uh, on uh, located at uh, 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Uh, this is the uh, Illinois primary, whatever. Once you say that, you don't have to say another word. Then you just continue to record the voting. And if something goes wrong, you got a nice juicy video for YouTube. Multiply that times everybody with a smartphone that votes. And you got a whole hell of a lot of voter fraud videos. And, and once this becomes... On YouTube. Normal. I can guarantee you they'll be taking away the phones before you enter the booth. That's your that's your private property. I don't care. You, you can't take it. you can't take somebody's uh, private uh, cell phone away. You put it on the side. It's not taking it. They take it every day when you go to the airport. They put it in a goddamn bucket. Yeah, but is it okay for? Uh, I'll give it to you is, when you is come Is it out. okay for them to rig the the voting booth, the polling? No, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying to protect their corruption, this may be a thing that they will do. Corruption has to be stopped, my friend. It has to be stopped. You need a stopper. Okay, so this is it. You are to blame because you obviously, as an American citizen, have choices. Now, another thing I want to bring up is that it is your right to vote whether you're registered with the two-party system or not you're still an American ah. you should be able to participate in the ah. primaries ah. why must you show allegiance to one of the parties yeah to one of the corrupt two parties mm -hmm. two major parties because the parties run the system see th then you might as well say what we have here is like a monarchy it's called corruption. Why, 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 see, this is, I see, I'm, I'm a proactive progressive warrior. I don't believe in all this pacifism, you know, and sitting with my thumbs up my ass waiting for Jesus to come back for a second time. I believe you got to, if somebody's under suspicion of indictment, you go after them and indict them. Not this pussyfooting that's going around. Oh, uh, Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin Oh, we suspect he's done many, many mm. bad things. He's he's under. Uh, we're we're uh, investigating him. He Ooh. may be. Uh, yeah, he may be under indictment. Oh, we have a um, a thousand and one FBI agents working on Hillary Clinton's email. Oh, yeah. she might get indicted. Yeah. Don't just post this these uh, um, news bulletins on social media and online. Do it. Go for it. If somebody's guilty, go for it. Back in the uh, Chris well, Christie with the um, back in the Bridgegate, the twenties, thirties, or forties, or whenever the hell it was. Elliot Ness. Ah, well, I used to watch that. Came around because why? Because there was all kinds of corruption, but they were the untouchables, weren't they? He was the he was the most famous. FBI agent, huh? They were the untouchables. Get my point. My point is, you are you are trying to get somebody indicted, but there ain't nobody to indict them. So therefore, is they, the Attorney General of Wisconsin going after Scott Walker? Doesn't look like it. No. Or even Rick Scott of Florida. Oh, he, he's not. In, he's not innocent either. You got to get somebody who has the power. 
to, you know, take these people out. Remember, remember Governor Rick Perry of Texas, all the news articles about him possibly being indicted? Uh -huh. Was he ever indicted for no. anything? Was thrown out or whatever. <laughs> if you got control of the, I mean, just look at the other countries around. If they got control of the uh, the the, uh, the legal system or whatever, you get away with what you want to get away with. Hey, they didn't they didn't have to indict Muammar Gaddafi. They somebody just shot him in the head. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's why these... And the United States allowed it. That's why these... Oh, that's another thing against You know, Muammar Gaddafi had free education, a universal health care, and all the things that uh, Bernie is talking about or we need in the United States. That's why he was taken out. They have... Uh, what do you think they did with Hugo? Chavez. The same thing. He wanted those things for his people. We didn't like it. He died of um, prost advanced prostate cancer, I think. Some kind of cancer he had. But what I mean is that whole uh, that whole NATO bombing of Libya. That, that, that's another thing that that's on Hillary's head, man. There's so much dirt on Hillary, but nobody's doing a di diddly dick thing about e exposing Hillary, indicting her. Same thing with Scott Walker. Same thing with all of them, really. When you get to a certain point in life, you can get away with murder. They, what they, did Trump say? Trump said once upon a time, I could go out there and shoot somebody. In the middle of Manhattan. In the middle of Manhattan, and they'll still love me. <laughs> yeah. Well, these people, there's a reason why these people are wearing Teflon clothing. I yeah, mean, you exactly. know. Uh, everything, everything we discuss politically is part of capitalism in a conch shell. <laughs> There's the conch, soaking that conch energy from King Neptune, the briny deep. All right, now. Speaking of that, I was watching a, a Star Trek the other day, the one with Apollo. When oh, Apollo yeah, was a yeah. god. That's <laughs> such a, such a. And uh, th two days ago, I watched Cat's Paw, the one with the uh, the wizard and his familiar, who was a woman, but she was a cat, yeah. a black cat. See, my only <coughs> my only problem with the old Star Trek series is that the people, the alien beings, were too humanoid. They uh, because they didn't have the money for makeup and etc. That's why they had all this, you know. Uh, that's why the Klingon level shit. That's why the Klingons in in the newer uh, space uh, Star Trek movies, whatever, look more like a like an alien yeah. than the Klingon did. The only thing they did with the Klingons in the old series was put the green paint on and appoint the pointy ears. Well, with the Romulans, all they did was put the eyebrows up. And the ba and the ba yeah, the what? Romulans look just like the Kling Klingons, and and the bangs. They all had bangs, right? <laughs> Even the Vulcans had bangs. The Vulcans, yeah, but that's, Mo Howard. That's what it was, uh, because the Spock had the up eyebrows, and the Romulans had it too. In and the then later time. on, the um, the pro wrestler and movie star, The Rock, was d does the one look. Eye he does the one eyebrow going up. He's able to do the one eyebrow going way up. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't. I can do the Elvis Presley with the lip. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. But anyway, um, you know, people are um, because of the voter because of all the blatant voter fraud. Um, regardless what happens in California, um, they should uh, Bernie should run as an in independent progressive under a third party, a third party, a new a new progressive party, you know, because the Bernie or bust is is for real. I'm one of them. People cannot stand. They they loathe Hillary Clinton, and, well, they, and they have pledged not to back her. It's back to the old bullshit: the lesser of two evils, or the. the the, the evil instead of the good. The lesser of the two evils in this case 
is only lesser by a fraction. Hillary Clinton is really not that much lesser of the two evils. No, I don't want to call Bernie evil. No, 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 I don't talk about, no, I'm talking uh, if, about if Hillary. If a regular politician. I'm talking about if the carpet muncher, hawk nose, Jew-faced, Deborah Wasserman shits, got, if, if she got away with all this rigging and it was Hillary, I'm talking mm -hmm. about two-party uh, candidate. Forget about the independent, <coughs> independence and the Green Party and whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's a Trump versus Hillary, mm. Hillary's only a fraction lesser of the two evils than Donald Trump. Oh, no. In that case, there's no uh, lesser of the evils. Well, they're both... Uh, you I know. was taking, taking it with Bernie and her. But oh, no. Bernie, it's the, it's the good Bernie is, and the evil. Bernie is good versus evil. Yeah. Bernie is... There's no... Not yet, and I... I highly doubt if there ever will be. Knock on wood. Well, she's bitching that he hasn't exposed his taxes. There's no... Bernie said during the debate he has no problem exposing his taxes, but they will be very boring for people to read because, yeah, well, you know, yeah. he doesn't do the shenanigans that yeah, Hillary does. He only does. makes his a hundred and some thousand dollars and that's it. There is no dirt on uh, on, on Bernie Sanders. That's why nobody is, nobody voluntarily wants to debate him. Not, not even Hillary. Well, he, he ain't home and uh, his wife ain't home. So, you know, maybe they, 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 they got to wait and go back in time and pull out all the shit for all the years. How many years he wants to expose, I don't know. But, uh, you know, he's got to have to wait. No, he's when, busy right now. When you're dealing with someone who doesn't take bribes, doesn't give $300,000 speeches mm. for... for in, which magnificent is a, Which is a bribe, magnificent, which is a bribe, masqueraded as a speech. Yes. Uh, you, the tax returns are going to be very very simple and redundantly boring and uh, I don't Bernie has no problem showing them no. he just knows they're they're not gonna find anything on Bernie Sanders he, just, he knows it you know and it's not that he's he's against showing it you know Hillary's just avoiding uh, uh, spilling the beans on herself that's why she comes up with excuses like, you know, I'm waiting for everybody well, else she's to... She's looking for anything that she can point at him at this point, you know? And she's avoiding exposing <clears throat> her hand at the poker game. She's She doesn't want to expose the marked cards <sighs> at the poker game, okay? Exposing her hand. She's trying to keep it hidden. For as long as she could, unless somebody forces the hand to be tipped, uh -huh. to be tilted, uh -huh. you know, she knows. What I wonder she's, who that could be. She knows what she's done. Mm -hmm. She knows that she's guilty. She just doesn't want to let uh, let the jig let let the uh, cat out of the bag, so to speak. She don't want to do it, and she has the DNC on her side. So anyway, that's it. You are to blame. If, it, if you or I were the under inv uh, FBI investigation, I'm sure they'd have something on us by now. Oh, the little... How long they taken with the emails? Oh, the little guy? Yeah. Oh, they'll throw away the key with the little guy. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm saying they'll have something. Look at this. Look at the crap with Christie. Oh, well... Uh, the damn stuff is put off until uh, yeah. September... Uh, in the paper today, Bridge Gate, uh, yeah. uh, 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 Kelly and uh, Baroni, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they uh, what, what, what are they saying? They're saying uh, they, they, it's all baloney. Boney, boney, baloney. It's all baloney. Bo it shouldn't, it shouldn't have came on them. Baloney from Boney Maroney. Yeah. Come on, man. Um, we can't even, we can't even prosecute them. Guilty of sin. Damn it. You know, and, uh, hey, listen. 
if I know I'm, I keep hammering him, but he deserves to be hammered. If if mm. if a if a man who was who behaved so progressive, like New York City Mayor Bill De Blasio and his wife, if they could sell out and turn, change their mind and support Hillary Clinton and and dump Bernie Sanders, then you can kiss the Democratic Party goodbye. But there are those that are still loyal to the Democratic Party. But I'm very happy that the feminists have um, have uh, come clean. You know, I, I always knew they had a very selfish agenda, and they came clean in the in the video interview that uh, is posted on our group, um, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Um, all of our links <coughs> are located um, at the front cover page of our Facebook group titled Progressive Discussions. All of them. So, that's it. I minimize my posting. If you're interested in what we're about, just go to Progressive Discussions, click on that front cover, and it's all there. It's all self-explanatory. I, I have it all made simple because you have to make things very simple for today's Americans, I'm telling you. For simpletons. Well, advertisement in general should always be not only very simplistic, but not too wordy. You, you don't want too many words. Uh, cause, uh, oh, they don't have too many words. You see the disclaimers at the end of these commercials, and the guy has to go... <laughs> it's got to fit it in 30 seconds, man. And then legally, he can always say that he, he, already, he said it. Like, legally, he can get away with telling people, Oh, oh, didn't you know that that's our rule? That's the when you buy When you buy a, a, a new she Chevy uh, Impala uh, or whatever at our dealership, didn't, didn't, didn't you know that we had the disclaimer? I said it. He might have said it like, a, like an auctioneer. But it's just like when you, get a, when you download a program or, or you uh, put in an application on your computer. You have to agree with the terms. Terms of agreement. You've got to read it all. But you know what they do? you got to be careful. It'll say um, free version, but in reality, it's free trial. Trial version. And one time, I thought I, was, I had a free version of something, uh -huh. and the trial was only like five minutes. Well. And I, I go... Goodbye, and I got I, I got rid of it. I, I took it out of my hard drive. Whenever I had a trial version of something, it usually was for 30 days. And I would download it 15 days later or something. It was gone. Even that was a lie. My 30 days I didn't get. Even the 30 days is a lie. Yeah. See, the politicians, they lie to you, and now the, the, the companies lie to you blatantly. It's a... Even your trial is not Honestly, what they claim it is. Yeah. I've had that done to me too. Yeah. I thought I had a month me too. to use it with the yeah. countdown. No, no, not at all. Yeah. All right, let us sink our teeth into these readings. The bells that begin the readings. Seven bells, lucky number. The right. bells of St. Mary. And that's a nice, loud, crisp sound with that new bell. When it comes to Donald Trump's lack of qualifications to be president, it truly is a buyer's market. Yeah. The two things that frighten me most are his inexperience and his intellectual laziness. Every president since Harry Truman has begun each day with the President's Daily Brief, containing the most sensitive intelligence reporting and analysis in the world. According to David Priest, who recently authored a book on the subject, the brief's purpose is to prepare the President for trips abroad national security threats and global opportunities yeah roger well that's the brief that uh, george w bush ignored 
when it said, Obama determined to strike in the United States. Osama. Okay? He said Obama. Osama. I mean Obama. Osama. Osama. Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Yes. Um, you know, I, I also right. I also believe in keeping a log like they do in the military, like in the Navy, keeping a log, which is like a diary of things. Uh. Roger Stone, a sometime advisor to Trump, said in a recent interview that the Republican frontrunner lacks the bandwidth to read a 40-page briefing book. He's not going to read that. I suppose I could learn to live with a crude president, but one who either refuses to read or is incapable of understanding the perils, pearls cast before him is another matter. No, he, he wants to run like the, 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 he wants to run the country like a dictator. It's, uh, it's his way or the highway. We're uh, going to win. You're going to get bored with winning. You're going to get tired of winning. We're going to win so much. Oh, he said that? What do you mean? That's his whole uh, thing. The other day... We're going to win, but when he says we are going to win, is he talking about the mainstream? He's talking about the United States. In general? We are going to win. Yeah. We are going to win, okay. But he's also... That's his stick. Winning. That's his shtick. He got that from Charlie Sheen okay. when Charlie Sheen was in trouble. We're at the world of horrors. You know, winning, I'm a winner, winning, winning. That's where he got that from. The other day, he gave his first foreign policy speech with a teleprompter. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, because everything he's done before has been off the cuff. He hasn't had any, uh, you know, notes in front of him or etc. So it's all the same bullshit. I'm sorry for laughing, but Donald Trump is pure entertainment. But I do love when he taught when he makes fun of Carly Fiorina, Fiorina's face. I do, I do find that quite amusing. I am a senior citizen, a veteran, a registered Democrat. Mm, good, wonderful. But I am not one to blindly toe the party line. Voting for a Republican presidential candidate would not be a new experience for me. Oh, man. He's going from the frying pan into the furnace. If I vote Republican, however, I will not vote for Donald Trump. Well, heaven forbid you should go outside of the box and, and, and vote outside of the two-party system. I know Democrats and Republicans who support Trump's worldview mm. and appreciate his tough talk persona. Although they have tried, they cannot convince me that he should be the leader of the free world and the person to keep my family safe and me out of the poorhouse. In my 70 plus years, I have met individuals who talk and act like Trump. Growing up, they were in the schoolyard as a young Marine I served with one or two. And during my years working, I met more. They all shared similar characteristics. They talked big, they talked tough, but they couldn't be depended on. They never delivered, and they couldn't be trusted. They talked the talk, but they did not walk the walk. What makes Trump any different? Trying to sell me on his business acumen as the way he's going to make America great again begins from the false premise that America is not now great. It's not! It's got 900 bases around the world. It's got the greatest military in the world. What do you mean it's not great? 
Well, it the people aren't great. It depends what you're saying by great. Exactly. It, so great, ask that I mean, question. Great, uh, uh, Don't say we're not great. We are a great nation. We're the greatest empire that has ever existed on the planet Earth. Well, well, there are different forms of greatness. Yes, but that's what you just said. We're military not great. strength. Period. Well, of course we have we have uh, too much military strength. We have a bloated military budget. Yeah. Well, when I say great, I mean great economically, the job market, standard of living, the people. Like 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 Scandinavia now, those are great countries. Yeah, but they are not militarily great. See, there's the boy. Now you you, you got to specify, man. Yeah, you're, you see, you're thinking like um, that's a different prior set of priorities when you're thinking military greatness. Capitalizing on the fears uh, and the insecurities of the vulnerable, as he does, is dishonorable. Moreover, holding up the ridicule and name-calling those in his own party who have given years to public service is unseemly and, in my opinion, a substitute for lacking a substantive understanding of the issues this country faces. Yeah, he wants to treat the presidency like uh, when he took a million dollars of his father's money and parlayed it into a fortune in the real estate game. He thinks he's gonna apply the the art of the deal with uh, changing the country around but you know, I foresee him not getting along with uh, most individuals. Yeah, so how can he get things done? You see it with Obama. Well, you need... You and can't, he's trying to work with individuals. You can't just v elect a specific type of president only. You have to elect a Congress and a Senate that thinks a lot like the president you elected. Bingo. And then the president will have the support to nominate the right the like-thinking Supreme Court justices that think like them. Mm -hmm. And then you have cooperation. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, in, in medical terms, uh, homeostasis. Mm -hmm. If you want to get technical and fancy. That's what happened with Mr. FDR. Homeostasis. At first, you know, things were going well, and then all of a sudden, you elect the uh, Republicans and you can't do anything anymore. This is why I always say the um, American people are natural born imbeciles. They're just brain dead. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You really are stupid motherfuckers. Really. Well, as I said the other day. Really. <clears throat> the electorate have nothing, no one to blame but themselves because they <laughs> will not vote for change. They have the choices of change. There, there's more people than just a Republican and a Democratic candidate. Even if you vote for your, a governor of your state, you're going to see a whole bunch of choices there. You know, no one says you don't have choices, but you keep on making the, the choice for the establishment. Correct. The establishment is what you're focusing on. Yeah. And that's the problem. And the establishment allows corporations, billionaires, and millionaires to have their way with our government. And no regulations. You want a, you want a deregulated Everything. free enterprise system. Deregulated. So they can steal and lie to you. And then take away your sovereignty, which that's all what the TPP and the other trade uh, things they seek to do all the time. They seek to allow the corporations to be able to override governments. Hey, I was watching um, the program on the Travel Channel called The Mysteries of the Museum, and they did a, they, add, they, they did a documentary about, a short documentary about Wilhelm Reich. Ah! When he went to Arizona with the uh, using his the rainmaker, the rainmaker, correct, and they and the the feds threw him in federal prison, 
and said and well and, not then well they didn't take him they didn't take his uh his science seriously at all no they said what he was, was he was just lucky because you know, when you have a drought in the desert, eventually it rains. So they they said he got lucky. Well, and those no, two things have nothing to do with each other. Well, they didn't want to. Maybe because he didn't want to sell out like Thomas Edison did. Did you hear what I just said? What? Those two things have nothing to do with each other. What? He was put in jail for contempt of court. Right. That was a case that the FDA brought against. It had nothing him. to do with the re the so-called rainmaker. Correct. Okay. Now after. After the um, interesting little tidbit on um, the great Wilhelm Reich, they uh, talked about the, I uh, believe, the Union Pacific. Hold on. Railroad. This racket outside. The Union Pacific Railroad, when they were first building the first, uh, uh, I don't know why they call it transcontinental. Because it goes across the continent. Yeah, they, were joined, they wanted to join the East Promontory Coast. Promontory Point. The East Coast, from New York to California, the Golden with, Spike, right, and they were, and the, and and then they eventually had a ceremony where the two railroads met, and they had the last spike dri driven into the ground, and it was a big celebration. Well, guess what? The uh, the railroad workers <laughs> got very violent and angry and protested because they haven't been. They were getting stiffed for pay. The well, what? the, the coolies built the railroad. The business people, the investors, or the the company that was running the uh, Union Pacific Railroad was not paying their workers, and their workers refused to work. And they 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 held up the stagecoach. Hey, hey. Oh, not the stagecoach. They held up the train where two of the uh, company leaders were on at gunpoint. They put guns to their head and says, Ooh. you know, you owe us, uh, I don't know what the hell it was, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars. You know, the, uh, the men are not getting paid. You keep on stiffing us. You the keep railroads on <coughs> were the biggest corruption things during the Industrial Revolution. Well, that's that's what they were getting to. They were okay. saying that yeah. a lot totally of the, a lot of the fundings were, were stolen money and and the a Union Pacific Railroad Company was very corrupt. They owned their judges, they owned their yeah. congressmen, they yeah. owned their senators. So you might they as got well, things done, you, maybe you might as well say corruption in the capitalist system started from day one. Well no kidding. From day one. What does that uh, this, this scripture say from the Bible? As the nail sticks between two stones, so does sin sticketh to buying and selling. Thank you. Well, this took place in the in the 1870s, I yeah. believe. This was the late 1800s. I guess you would call that the Victorian era. It was the it was the Industrial Revolution. You know, that was like the burgeoning years. That was like the the beginnings of yeah. So, uh, and then people left the family farms to live in the city, to work in factories. That to, is correct. To to work for the man, but the in man. this case, the men that ran that company um, were crooked as all hell. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh -huh. and that's that. So I thought it was interesting. So. Well, let me continue with this so I can set the record straight on Mr. Wilhelm Reich okay. because it is constantly, the record is always skewed. Reich went to jail for contempt of court because the judge did not accept his letter of explanation when he told him, you and, and the FDA or whatever have no abilities to judge science. Well, he was so I will not appear. But oh. he sent a letter to point his position out in it. Said, the judge, it, it was his discretion. He could have accepted it, or he, or, or, but he didn't.
And so Reich uh, went to court, went to uh, jail for two years for contempt of court. But he didn't last. He died in jail. Okay. What they do with Tesla? How old was? What Reich? do we do with all of our great scientists? Was he was he an old geezer when he went to? Jail? No, he smoked. Reich. And ended up with a heart condition. Oh, like Carlton Fredericks uh, was a chain smoker. Correct. He, he's one of the famous uh, nutritionists of all time. Correct. <laughs> uh, you're true. It's very well, true. These people sometimes don't, you know, they can be brilliant and etc., but they don't have all the information. Well, they don't. Okay. You gotta, you gotta practice what you preach. Like, like uh, the late great Amen. Jack Lane stated that the best way to teach others and your children is by example you know what i mean that's pretty wise well the example at that time in the 1950s was that doctors were on television advertising smoking as a great thing uh um, um tobacco company bribery perhaps who knows paid off but the tobacco companies avoided prosecution for, I think it's 30 or 40 years. What's that company? Uh, Philip Morris? Philip Morris. Philip Morris. I think they made Camel. Did they not make Camel? The ones without the filters. Without the filters. They'll walk, uh, the, the, the guy says, I'll walk a mile for I'd a Camel. I'd walk a mile for a Camel. In the early days of radio, when the Sunday nights when they played the, the serials, that was one of the commercials. I'd walk a mile for a camel. When my grandmother had her poker games, oh, oh. they all smoked as they played poker. And my grandfather used to get so upset. Her father. Yeah, she used to put the big fan on. In those days, if you bought a window fan, was made of steel and it was powerful and it was heavy. Yeah, it made a nice humming noise. And and and, and when and you went up to it and sang in it, it sounded like uh, you know echo. And when you walked in the other rooms, you saw the curtains in the bedroom waving like the flags back behind me. They were like you, it actually had power. Yeah. And it sucked that freaking smoke right out of the house because they were all nervous wrecks playing poker. And. Uh, yeah, Grandma liked poker. But anyway, so does uh, Dr. Bill over here. He likes chess and poker. Anyway. Oh, I saw an advertisement I don't play for... poker too much. Anymore. I have a, I saw an advertisement for this uh, online gambling. Uh, that's a good way for people to lose this shirt. Hey, guess who's going to support it? Chris Christie. The poor! Oh, the poor. Who thinks supports all this the, crap? The poor, the poor love casinos. Yeah, uh, the ones who shouldn't mm. are the ones who, you know, they get addicted to it. Whatever, but uh, the ones who shouldn't gamble, gamble. The odds are always astronomically against you. They're in there with their, they're for the house. Always. The odds are for the house. You know. Go to your local convenience store and buy a. A good win for life scratch off ticket or so do something like that. You know, I don't 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 go to a casino. I just lost yesterday. I just lost the seven thousand dollars a week for life. Publishers Clearinghouse. Oh no, I'm talking about the state's win for life. Well, I'm talking about the fact that I've lost the ten thousand dollars a week, the five thousand dollars a week, and the seven thousand dollars a week. I've lost them all. Yeah, who knows if they really, if you don't subscribe to magazines, who knows what they do with your your entry. You know, I don't trust, I don't trust any private company. Now, we're going to take a lunch break. I don't know what the hell Dr. Bill's having, but I'm, I brought my tree nuts. Not bush nuts, not ground nuts, but tree nuts. Uh, not ground nuts. Don't ground my nuts. <laughs> I'm in... <laughs> Almonds and walnuts. Okay, we'll see you. And now you're going to hear William Hamilton Morrill III with promo. And uh, how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. And we'll be back for the balance of the show.
I'm William Marlboro. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen. For the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. All right, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your words of wisdom. And, um, of course, of course, when I return, when we return to do the show, the dog outside starts barking. Not during our lunch. It was actually quite peaceful during our lunch. Boy, oh boy, that that right wing Beelzebub sure knows how to push our buttons. And what were we talking about of importance? Um, about we uh, talked about something important. Yeah, besides food. Um, eh. I don't remember. <laughs> I was reading. Oh yeah, I'm let's go. Trumpy. All right, let's 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 return to the readings. That's a good way to start the second half of the show. Okay. Ah, okay. uh, what I got here? Let me see. Some about the 2016 race. Probably, but I got to open it up, man. Ah! Found it. I read the letter with great interest, but it is all wrong. I worked for a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Oh, heaven forbid. He worked his way through college by working in a slaughterhouse. He graduated from college received a master's in finance from Harvard University. I hope this is true. His college education was expensive. He climbed the ladder of success through hard work, responsibility, and great management skills. How do you do the world's smallest violin? How do you do that like this? He had to travel the world for business. I cannot <coughs> tell you how many family things he missed. He was our CEO when 911 happened. He ensured that everyone in our company was taken care of because some of our employees could not make it back to New York City. My question is, how can you even begin to compare what a CEO is worth for all his education, hard work, and responsibility to someone who makes $15 an hour. No matter how you slice it, someone making hamburgers in a fast food restaurant is not worth $15 an hour. What about the, uh, what about the, uh, the, the cost of living increase? Those are not jobs one takes to support a family. How does he know? I, for one, know our CEO was worth 
every penny he made. Oh, obviously this individual is a typical a co company man and a, and a corporate ass kisser. Uh, 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 trying uh, uh, to win brownie points. I, I would say so. Uh, first of all, there, there, there is nothing shameful in um, in um, flipping hamburgers if that is what you need to do to survive. And there are many people who did not get the breaks in life nor do they have the education, nor can they afford the college tuition, et cetera, et cetera, that have to accept the hamburger flipping job, and they have no choice. So, so if you are those that um, fall into the um, minimum wage category, many of them uh, are immigrants, just starting out in the United States without professional skills. Some of them have professional skills, but there's a, a language uh, barrier uh, preventing them. Uh, it's not that easy. If you're, you're a doctor or a lawyer in another country, they make you take all those damn exams and you gotta go through a lot of crap to, to, to be able to practice in the United States. Meanwhile, you, you could have been an outstanding physician in Europe or wherever, you know? It's not fair. But so, what I'm saying is some people have to take the hamburger flipping job. And the $15 an hour is not some big reward. So, uh, uh, it's not, a, you know, a big prize for flipping hamburgers. It's a realistic living wage that is most more closely related to the uh, cost of living increases. So this person is a complete uh, a, a blithering idiot and an asshole. And I'd, I'd love to give him an old-fashioned USDA grade-A knuckle sandwich right in the chops. I don't need my shillelagh to take care of him. It's a him, right? Asshole from New Jersey, I bet, right? Probably. Yeah. The 2016 presidential election is coming up. And it has been a topic throughout my school year. The two Democratic candidates are Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. I like Sanders because when he talks about issues, he uses words like we or we can which indicates his willingness to work as a team right but his team is much too passive uh, in terms of all this election fraud from Hillary Clinton they're not they're not fighting enough he also doesn't have a super political action committee which means he gets his funding from private supporters rather than big donors potentially trying to buy influence. What concerns me about Sanders is his age. If he dies while in office... Well, hopefully he would have chosen a very worthy vice president. We may wind up with a president we do not like. Oh no, I'm sure Sanders will pick somebody very qualified that thinks like him. In my opinion. Clinton is not as good a candidate as Sanders. She uses words like I when she discusses issues. And she gets a great portion of her funding from a super political action committee. I believe she gets all of it. Yes. The Republican candidates are less impelling. They certainly seem to be dysfunction, a dysfunctional group. I believe Donald Trump is one of the worst. If not the worst. S sane asylum. Presidential candidates of all time. He wants to get his way. And when he doesn't, he swears. And throws a temper tantrum. Yeah, he throws a tantrum, that's true. This is not the type of personality trait the President of the United States should have. 
I believe another undesirable candidate is Ted Cruz. He's the most dangerous. He's the worst. He was raised in an environment that believes there is nothing scientific about evolution and that the communism and evolution go hand in hand. And, they, and because of his evangelical lunatic father, cultists, they're cultists, they don't really, they believe that their Bible, their Bible should be the law of the land. When I say their Bible, I mean their interpretation of the, of the Bible. They're, they're cultists. Cruz is a religious radical. Here we go with the word again. Extremist, sir. Extremist, not radical. Who, believe that, who believes that homosexuality is satanic? He's satanic. These are just two reasons why he is not a good presidential candidate. He wants to execute the uh, doctors who perform abortions. Uh, he considers doing? he considers a fertilized egg to be a human being, yeah. which is absurd. Exactly. These people are lunatics, plain and simple. But they're upfront about their lunacy. I do not see them as difficult to campaign and debate against. I see Hillary Clinton as the wolf in sheep's clothing. Hillary Clinton is the sneaky snake in the grass. Hillary Clinton is a more a uh, crafty, diabolical tool of uh, Satan than the Republicans. The Republicans are obvious. Their agendas are in your face. Hillary Clinton is the trickster uh -huh. in 2016. Call Batman! And the people are falling for it. I, I, you know, she, she brings nothing to the table for the poor low income and the minorities. She brings nothing to the table. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you people that ahead of time, uh, especially since our state's primary is in uh, July? June. June. 7th. June 7th. Okay. Felines at Japan's popular cat cafes. <laughs> Are they serving Cats or are cats in the recipe? <laughs> Don't make fun. Hey, go ahead. They just caught. They just caught a uh, a bunch of dogs that were getting ready to be butchered. Where? Where is it in China? I don't think it was even in China. So yeah, you know. They are, the cats are now allowed to stay up until 10 p.m. to interact with customers. The cats are allowed. Cats do what they want. They they. they. <laughs> the Environment Ministry's animal rights panel said on Wednesday that the cats will be allowed to hang out two hours later than the old guidelines allowed. Tell that to the cats. Hey, kitties, it's way past your bedtime. You can't hang out with the customers. They're nocturnal. Well, they're, they're whatever they want to be animals. They're nocturnal, yes, but you can't put a cat to bed or tell a cat not to do something. Under the 2012 guidelines, cats and other animals at pet shops could not be displayed after 8 p.m. Cat cafes are establishments where customers can see and play with cats. Is there an op uh, option for adoption? I don't. Doesn't say. No. Well, speaking of um, speaking of um, pets and pet stores. You see, uh, did you see in the news about that son of a bitch scumbag that was closed down in Paramus, Bergen yes. County, New Jersey? Yes. For over a hundred counts of animal cruelty? Yes. 
Yes. I'm glad they mentioned his name. Yes. He's trying to get back his permit or license to reopen his pet shop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, puppies, kittens, or whatever, were in um, were, ca were caged up, sitting in feces, in urine, yeah. in very close quarters, in little little cages. Yeah. Very unsanitary conditions. It's obviously somebody who just wants to sell, sell whatever he can sell and doesn't care for the health and welfare of the animals that he's selling. He just wants to simply sell. So. Billionaire political donor Charles Koch right. said Democrat Hillary Clinton may make a better president than any of the Republicans vying for the job. She's the best puppet for the top 1%. And derided the rhetoric of Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. The chairman and chief executive officer of Coke Industries, Inc., in an interview with ABC's this week, broadcast on Sunday, also criticized the tax code that subsidizes the wealthy. This year's Republican candidates now whittled down to Donald Trump, Cruz, and John Kasich have failed to win his backing because they aren't addressing that issue. Oh, jeez. He stopped short of saying he would endorse the former Secretary of State, and Clinton swiftly dismissed any hint of support. Uh. Not interested in endorsements from people who deny climate science. And try to make a, it harder for people to vote, Clinton said. No, now she cares, right? Charles Koch and his brother David, whose combined net worth is a hundred and six billion dollars. They're worried about the tax code? According to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, have spent hundreds of millions of dollars supporting Republicans whose platforms are consistent with their Small government views. Charles Stoke. How much money do you need to be content? Took issue with the idea that the size of their donations give the brothers control of the party's agenda. Yes, yeah, sure. If I control the Republican Party, we wouldn't have a two-tiered two system. We wouldn't have a tax that subsidizes the wealthy. Coke said. This sounds like a little bullshit to me. Where he wants taxes on the rich. Come on. Maybe he's, you think he saw the Holy Spirit in his old age? <laughs> you know what Andrew Carnegie said, don't you? <laughs> what? He said, a man a man who dies wealthy is a disgrace. Well, that's what I, that's what Don King said about his hair going white, sticking straight up in the air. He said he saw the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's uh, the you see, but there, there, there. See, I like people that are honestly obvious about their agenda and and they and they're, they 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 get real with you you could you could admit that you're a greedy scumbag you could admit that michael douglas did in wall street greed is good well that's his perception because he only cares about himself yeah. if you only care about yourself look if you come clean and you say 
You know what? I only care about myself, and I don't care about. Well, that's the, what Ayn Rand did. I don't care about the poor, and, and all uh, her Ayn Rand supporters. I'm a multi-billionaire, and I want to hoard all the money for myself. Altruism is weakness. And then I'll just say, you know, well, at least you're honest with me, you know. And and uh, you might be a no good, low, dirty, low down scumbag, but you're honest with me. But don't pretend like Hillary Clinton pretends. But then again, Hillary Clinton is is very obvious also. She's not a progressive, that's obvious. But what's worse is like we said at the beginning of the show, the American voter, the electorate, is to blame for all of the problems in this country, including their problems. Mm -hmm. That's it. You have choices. When you walk in that voting booth, there are choices. It doesn't have to be Republican or Democrat. Now, if if uh, divine intervention takes place and uh, Bernie Sanders wins a nomination, which he will he will probably get screwed and not win. Hey, you can always write in Bernie, or if Bernie forms a, a, a third party, you can always vote for that vote for him there. You have choices. You have choices. We have this corporate welfare that benefits established companies and makes it very difficult for somebody to get started. Koch said the United States has to get rid of all tax breaks. I don't hear any of the Republican candidates talking about this two-tiered system. The little, the small business owners should get tax and getting, breaks. And getting rid of it. Why do we need any tax breaks for anybody? He doesn't want anyone to have tax breaks. No, I said it. What, what, Why do we need tax breaks? What about the... Uh, they uh, don't do anything for a business. What about a... It is what you consumers pay for your product. That helps a business. It's called profits. You don't make profits from lower taxes. Lower taxes ain't going to keep you in business. So what would you rather? Without selling products. So what would you rather have? The uh, the, the 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 small entrepreneur, uh, the middle class, continue to pay the bulk of of the taxes. No. Why can't the rich pay their fair share? Yeah, of course. Well, of course, why are you saying but, but the small businessman should get why? tax breaks. Why? Because he's small. But it has not tax breaks have nothing to do with business. I just told you, business is you have a product, you sell the product, you make a profit. All right. So what you're saying is just have a a fair progressive tax system. That's correct. Where the more money you make, the more money you pay. It was that once upon a time. Where where the small businessman won't need, they won't need tax breaks, additional tax breaks, because they're paying much lower taxes to begin with. Again, you're, you're mixing taxes with business. Why do you want to punish the small entrepreneur? What did I just say? No. You're, 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 you're twisting words. You're trying to razzle-dazzle old James P. Madonna here. What did I just say? I, I agree with the progressive tax system. I agree with the rich paying most of the taxes. But why, how come you have no compassion for the small business owner? What did I just say? You taxes. don't want to give the small business owner tax taxes. breaks have nothing to do with business. Why can't they have tax breaks? I don't care about tax break. I just said they have nothing to do well, with business. But there's nothing to ensure if there's if there are small upcoming company, there is no guarantee they're going to make the uh, the adequate profit in their small business. Correct. Okay. And then they will pay no taxes. If they don't make any profit, they ain't going to pay any taxes. Well, if they make a little profit, uh -huh. then they'll pay chicken feed in taxes, right? That's correct. And but then taxes have nothing to do with a business running well or not. In other words, Your profits it, do. It's not going to make the the little guy owning the mom and pop store any greater by having tax breaks. Is what you're trying to because say? Because first of all, you have to make a profit before you'd have to pay taxes. 
true. So what the hell is cutting taxes got to do with making a profit? Well, the tax system definitely has to be different than it is now. That's correct, because Mr. Reagan screwed it up, didn't he? The, yeah, the Hollywood actor, the demon Reagan, who everybody made a saint out of him. The Republican Party made a big saint out of him. You know, they, they, they really did. And they think Ollie North is like some kind of hero, too. The billionaire's assessment of Clinton was based in part on the White House record of her husband, Bill Clinton. That's right. But as far as the growth in government, the increase in spending, it was two and a half times more under Republican George W. Bush than it was under Clinton. Let me tell you something. Billary yeah. Clinton, Bill Clinton was no savior. He's, he he was very guilty. Well, being that Hillary is so proud of, of running on her husband's past record, all the things that he pulled shows him not to be for the mainstream and the poor. Not to be. But ain't it funny how people's uh, memories are very short and that, that they can get away with giving you a perception of what occurred rather than what did occur. Well, uh, Bill Clinton became like Ronald Reagan. He became the saint, the patron saint uh, of modern day uh, Democrats. You know? Because he adopted more corporatism. He's, he is no, and I repeat, he is no uh, LBJ, JFK, and FDR. Bill Clinton couldn't make a pimple on their ass. Yes. A brief, Go ahead. a brief mention of Monica Lewinsky. She's a hot looking chick, man. By a prominent Bernie Sanders supporter sparked controversy on the campaign trail over the weekend. It's a good-looking woman. With Hillary Clinton's team accusing her Democratic presidential rival of condoning vitriol. I think uh, Hillary should give Monica a job in her cabinet. Actress Rosario Dawson. Very smart woman. Who has campaigned with Sanders on several occasions. I salute her. Brought up the former White House intern on Saturday during a Sanders rally in Wilmington, Delaware. Referencing the work that Lewinsky now does to combat cyberbullying. Dawson said she and other Sanders supporters are being bullied by Clinton's allies. Bullied? I like to see them bully me. I'll crush them like a, like a friggin' uh, accordion. We are literally under attack for not just supporting the other candidate, Dawson said. Now I'm with Monica Lewinsky with this. Bullying is bad. She has actually dedicated her life to talking about that. And now, as a campaign strategy, we are being bullied. And somehow that is okay. And not being talked about with the richness that it needs. Hey, just give it right back to Bill Clinton about his past record. You, you know, you can't argue with facts. During an appearance on Sunday on CNN State of the Union, Sanders deflected a question about whether the remark was appropriate. Rosario is a great actress. She's doing a great job for us, he said. She's been a passionate fighter to see that we increase the voter turnout, that we fight for racial, economic, and environmental justice. All true. Clinton campaign spokesman Nick Merrill told CNN <coughs> excuse me, that his campaign will absolutely not address Dawson's comments refer referencing Lewinsky, whose sexual dalliances with former President Bill Clinton led to his impeachment. 
that I think the stained blue dress should be in the Smithsonian Institute. Ah. Uh -huh. To be honest with you. It's got to be somewhere. Devil with the blue dress on? It's got to be somewhere because somebody brought it up a while ago. Well, listen. It's really not difficult to debate uh, either Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton because they get they have so much dirt on them. It's but you know I mean it's it's a it's a it's a piece of cake really. Uh, now I just want to did you did you uh, listen to that video from that um, um, organization uh, African Americans for, uh, organization uh, for Bernie Sanders? It's, it's it has a very clever name. It's called the uh, the Black Burner Coalition. The Black Burner, you know, is a play on words, like back burner. The Black Burner Coalition, no. and it was um, a Hillary, uh, I mean, somebody in the campaign, not just uh, a voter, but uh, uh, one of the uh, feminist uh, uh, Hillary um, supporter, Hillary, Endorser, camp supporter? Hillary campaigner, okay. or whatever, um, uh, debating uh, in an interview uh, with the, this uh, the black lady that um, from the coalition, mm -hmm. and uh, and and the black woman was right on the money about Hillary Clinton's flaws, and the um, the representative of the Hillary Clinton campaign was making it sound like Hillary was, was so progressive and, and about all the issues she cares about it. A blatant liar. PR instead of the truth. All PR, a blatant lies, mm -hmm. making Hillary Clinton out, uh, into making her into something she is not. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the black girl was right on the money right. with Hillary Clinton. And, and it was a pretty good interview uh, conducted and uh, I posted it on the Facebook group, Hard, uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Um, but uh, let's just hope that people realize that they can write in Bernie Sins. Anyway, we got time for one more? Yep. Okay. As a Democrat and a pro labor person, I fully support. The advances being made for economic justice. New Jersey voters in 2013 approved a minimum wage increase to $8.25 an hour. Big deal. And tied future increases to inflation. Still, on a national level, CEOs' wages are obscene. Oh, without a doubt when compared to minimum wage earners. While many CEOs make about a thousand times more than their workers, they have no shame in keeping workers' wages lower. If CEOs' wages were tied to $15 per hour, then they might get serious about raising wages for everyone else. Yeah, well, I told you about the CEO of Goodwill Industries making $880,000 a year. And it's a fundraiser, a charity, and they, and they hire disabled people, giving them uh, $2 an hour. Oh, it's, it, this is, they're all like that, all the big charities. That, I mean, uh, the CEO is a bona fide parasite, parasite vampire. In reality, he's not paid for for uh, 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 success. He's paid for luck. Okay, what he can get out of the directors. Well, you you remember what I told that the child leukemia supposed supposed legitimate child leukemia uh, charity that called the house yeah. and. Uh, I made the mistake of picking up the phone, and I uh, told I told them how I felt about <laughs> the, about the big charities, and their answer was, "Well, at least they get a little, right? These poor kids are lucky to get 
you know, a few cents on a dollar. Uh, if it wasn't for us, they would get nothing. Yeah. That that's the, they were legitimizing the uh, dishonest theft. The, 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 the theft. theft. The dishonest um, administrative costs. The theft of the donated money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I call it, the theft. And if austerity is needed, we should all share the burden. Keeping wages at poverty level helps no one. As we watch austerity trash economic systems in Europe and Puerto Rico, where the burden falls on the poorest of its citizens, we have to wonder where all this is going. A race to the bottom helps no one and eventually will hurt the CEOs too. Henry Ford knew this because he understood that the general public had to have enough income to purchase his cars. I'm glad he brought that up. As for the local businesses, please remember that workers pay taxes and spend money locally and that helps us all. But first, that works for all the people and not one that works on the people. You see, that's a very, very excellent reading for the end of this week's progressive discussion show. People have to put in their minds, and even people that own businesses and CEOs and upper management and uh, executive uh, uh, management, they have to realize that the true consumer is the little guy. It's not the top 20%. And the more money the little guy has to spend, the more surplus cash that the poor and mainstream have, the more they will put that back into the economy. And they will spend it most likely locally, which means Main Street. So, which means they have the moolah to buy your product. Yes, yeah, so if you have... Every community in the United States, every town, every county, okay, every area will most likely spend their, their extra money, their extra cash, locally, which means all of the main streets in America will be stimulated, skyrocketing. Yeah. So, with, all, with every main street in America skyrocketing and... and uh, building up their economies it it, 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 w it will in turn build up the economy overall nationwide nationwide and that's you know yeah because if you make your people poorer then they have no money to support your business right now we are either going to have to move out of out of your local area or the country or whatever to find new markets because you have made the United States a third world nation and it's no longer a market because it doesn't have the money. Yeah, I mean look at and look at all the see wages will, will become very competitive too because now you, you, you might only have a McDonald's over here, a Walmart over there, a Burger King over there and that's it. You know, for, for we're talking about the little guy, you know, the masses, the asses of the masses. Now, when you stimulate, when you stimulate Main Street, now you have other small businesses that will provide jobs. Like, let's say, is, uh, let's say um, Joe Flapjack's uh, bakery opens up. Joey Flapjack. So Joey Flapjack's bakery takes off. Mm -hmm. And ends up so busy that you got to take a, a number to wait online. You got to get a ticket out of the ticket machine. All right, huge bakery. Th those are all new jobs that are going to be created in the community. The same thing goes for other markets and other stores and other small retail stores and professionals. You know, uh, you got the. You might have a half a dozen certified public accountants. In, in your county uh, uh, and you know and their rates will be will be competitive and all, so you won't just have the corporate chain screwing over the employee you'll have lots of options to 
places to work and get a job. So everybody's competitive and the service gets better and the products get better and the wages go up and the benefits go up. You see how this all works out? Because the little guy is a true consumer. So. The economy is supposed to be a, a cycle. Demand, like you told me many times, well, creates. Demand is what makes it run. Demand circle. creates jobs, yeah. The money comes in, the money goes out. The money comes in, the money goes out. It's like a, a, a circle. Like a rotary. Like that ancient... But if you put regulations in there and benefits, you screw up the circle. And now we got a... a what the hell do you call him? A, 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 a parabolic. <laughs> or whatever. Instead of a circle. See? Yeah. You screw up the whole dang thing. It's like what Vince McMahon said in, uh, when he bought, uh, bought out WCW way back in the day. He says, I don't like competition. There you go. Neither does any uh, big business. Why do you think when Walmart, Walmart comes to town, mom and pop go bye-bye? Because, because the Walton family, they don't want to be kept on their toes. They, yeah. they, when, you, when you have competition, you've got to stay on your toes. Yeah, you want to be the only uh, gunslinger in town. That's like if, uh, if, um, if the Ninja, you know, the famous food processor, yeah. the, the infomercial, if the Ninja didn't have to worry about the uh, Nutribullet RX, that company, and there wasn't like a war going on to see who's got the most, who has the most powerful mo electric motor and who has the best blades and well, which, which, which one performs better. If you didn't have that back and forth competition, then one company would just rest on their laurels and just go, eh, we what don't do have to even What do you think happened with try. Kodak? Huh? What do you think happened with Kodak? When the digital camera came into being, well, didn't IBM start resting on their laurels, and they and they and then all of a sudden Apple came around? Yeah. What about Tiak? Tiak actually sold all the shit for the VCR to uh, Japan. Is that that's when like Sony started to. Uh, like the, 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 the That's when they started to produce a decent material instead of the junk yeah. that they uh, we imported from them in the early days. Well, the the book written when when, when you know when when somebody said it was made in Japan, people laughed. Well, the, in the, those days, the the president, the CEO of Sony, got sick of sick and tired of hearing that. Right. That made in Japan was the laughing stock back then. That's correct. And he wrote a book which explains how we turn the company around and, and thus turn the, uh, the nation around. Right. Uh, they started producing the best right. quality. Right. And you know, and the same thing happened with South Korea, you know. I mean, uh, Hyundai, when they first came out, wasn't a good quality vehicle. Right. People laughed at it. Now, forget it. You have Samsung, Hyundai, Kia, they're all great products. You know, uh, uh, before Fiat was left at the Italian car. Now Fiat's advertising constantly. You know, with, with very yeah, the car is twenty thousand dollars. Very good-looking cars. You know, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's up Small. here. It's added. Look, you could Small, be small, but you know, you could be. You don't have to be a giant blue chip corporation. You you could be a a medium-sized company or a small company. But if you have the right way of thinking and you have a good research and development team ah. of engineers, that, you know, if you have people that think properly for the future, you could you could revolutionize an entire industry. American business does not do that anymore. They are short termers, not long -term. short termers. They want to make money every goddamn quarter, quarter to quarter. That's correct. Not long term profit. No, 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 no investment. For R and D, they'll steal somebody else's shit, but they won't, uh, you know, invest in research and development. Wow, nope. that, 
there, there's been many times where corporations stole a person's invention mm. and, or idea. How can you prove it? You know, I mean, it happens all the time. You know, I, I mean, uh, how do you know if your product is worthy enough to spend money on a patent? So you go to a company to pick their brains. Hey, what do you think of my product? <coughs> I think. Uh, leave it here over the weekend, sir, and we will uh, we will look into it. That's come happened. Back. <coughs> come back on Monday. I, you know, I came here. I want to see my. Your what, sir? That happened with um, the telephone and uh, Alexander Graham Bell. The the uh, the it was actually uh, the telephone was actually invented by an Italian man, Italian scientist, uh -huh. and he spoke very bad English, poor English, and he was, uh, he went on an interview and they, they said to him, well, leave, leave your, your papers with us and there we'll get are. back to you. Well, they didn't get back to him. No, I don't know. But all of a sudden, the first phone hit the market hey. and, and Alexander Graham Bell and what the hell? Took the, what the hell? Graham Bell took the credit for it. This is a true story, which I happened to see on uh, the mysteries of at the museum. And, you know, they go through all this stuff, and he stole the idea. And and the old man got credit. United States Congress actually gave him credit after he died. They he never saw the poor guy never saw the the realization of his. You know his efforts being recognized until he was dead. There you go. You know, and uh, that happens a lot in history. It's it, it's it's called not being fair, and not being nice either. Fair and nice has nothing to do with American business. Believe me. Yeah. What is what does Robert Barone say on uh, Everybody Loves Raymond? It's in, it, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. Uh, try try you to think so. Try to tell that to the uh, the capital, CEOs. the CEOs and the capitalists here. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Nice having you. And whoever has a primary coming up this Tuesday. Indiana. This it's Indiana alone. Uh, I don't know if it's alone. Well, if it's if it's Indiana, if it if there's more states in Indiana having their primaries. Think hard before you vote. And when you vote, video record it. And, of course, um, vote for a guy who's going to do something for you. Vote for that genuinely honest, ethical man who's going to actually work for you. And you know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You know who I'm talking about. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. But most importantly, think. Use your head for something other than a hat rack. Oh. Like my grand, like my grandpa used to say. There you go. All right, we'll see you. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.